Hey y'all, welcome to another episode of the Hardy Wrestling Podcast with your girl Stephanie Hardy, your host with the most. If this is your first time listening to this show, welcome and thank you for joining the ride. And if this isn't your first time listening, thank you for your continued support of this chill, positive, and passionate look at professional wrestling. So, of course, I've got your news and gossip-ish um, where I talk about everything that's going on in the world of wrestling via news, gossip, and pop culture. And I've got a special interview with La Femme Champion Casey Dillon, and she's an owner of the Belladonna Division, which is having its first event next month. And I have more information on that special event later on in a de- in a special segment dedicated to just that. So sit back, relax, and listen to the Hardy Wrestling Podcast. Catch the vibe. All right, so in this news and gossipish, there is so much going on in wrestling. I feel like I say that every week, but this week it takes on a whole new meaning in terms of just disrespect and respect, and pe- more people getting fired and people throwing shots and all of the above. Man, there's just so much going on. So I'm just gonna start with Mickey James. As you may or may not know, last week she was announced as one of the um, talents that unfortunately got released last week among the iconic Samoa Joe, um, Tucker, who used to be in Heavy Machinery with Otis and so many different people. And just one of the things that happened um, over the course of this week in terms of her getting her stuff back, you know how when you leave a job and then sometimes you, you know, leave your stuff, some of your stuff behind, if you don't get everything, the job is, um, sort of required to sort of give you your stuff back or mail it back if you didn't get it all. So she posted on her social media earlier this week, um, that she got a care package from WWE and it was in a trash bag and in a box. So, um, she posted a picture on Twitter that said, Dear at Vince McMahon, I'm not sure if you're aware, I did receive my WWE care package today. Thank you. And it was literally a trash bag. And I'm just like, whoa, so that's how they did that? It was kind of odd for me to kind of see that. So I was just like, so instead of just giving you your stuff back in a box, you know, and just having it labeled or some with like a nice note in it or something or something like that, they just threw it in a plastic bag like a trash bag and you would think someone of her caliber would deserve a little bit better than that but after she took that picture um triple h and stephanie mcmahon you know responded that same night and said upon learning of the disrespectful treatment some of our recently released talent received on behalf of the company we took immediate action the person responsible for this can inconsiderate action has been fired and is no longer with wwe and then stephanie said i am embarrassed you i'm embarrassed you or anyone else will be treated this way i apologize personally and on behalf of wwe the person responsible is no longer with the company so it seems as if the person who was in charge of this or the person who was over this sort of thing got you know reprimanded for it and basically got let go quietly um which is a good move um on their part to just say you know hey like this isn't something that we're okay with so we're gonna fire this person but the plot thickens a whole lot more because maria bennett or maria canellis um who used to work for the company also said that she got her stuff back in the exact same way and so that and so did um i believe jillian hall the girl who used to sing and all the other stuff like in the early 2000s on smackdown or whatever and had that grody looking mole on her face um she said that she got treated the same way and she got her stuff back via you know a trash bag or whatever and then later on a couple i believe it was yesterday they released news that someone that the person that in charge of you know them getting their stuff back was mark carano and he got and he was the one that got released from wwe in terms of this incident so this is a statement that i found um on instagram and it says um that there are several names who were reached out 
you know, and they identified Mark Carano as being the point of blame in the trash bag incidents to release talent and that Mark Carano's role was already largely taken over by um, John Laurinaitis, who made the calls to release talent last week and also made calls to apologize to talent this evening. Um, John stated to some of those talents that Mark Carano was responsible for the trash bag mishaps and that it had been taken care of without explicitly stating that Mark Carano had been fired at the time. And it is very possible that Carano being out of WWE means he could go without an official firing, but without having real duties. And then some other sources um, from WWE also made contact with Fightful.com to express remorse about the trash bag incidents, calling them embarrassing and saying they should never have happened. And they reiterated that they wanted to take care of it as quickly as possible. This is a statement that was posted on Down for the Count podcast Instagram page. I'll give a shout, I give a shout out to those girls for doing their thing. But it's just, it's not necessarily sure if that's 100% true. But if he's the one that's responsible for these trash bag incidents happening, then yeah, I would imagine that he would deserve some type of reprimand for that because these are released talent and the, and the very least that you could do is give them the dignity of having their stuff back without without making it seem like you just threw it in a trash bag. I mean, Jesus, like they've already lost lost a job that they that I'm pretty sure they didn't want to lose or that they really loved. You could at the very least pack it a little bit neater, a little bit nicer than just in a plastic bag. But like I said last week, we'll still wish the best for all of the release talent involved and I just hope that they go somewhere where they are um where they are valued and loved as much as they can be loved at this point. So, also in the news, we have um, the report that WWE will hopefully resume touring in the second half of 2021. So, the company, WWE's com- um, chief financial officer, Christina Salen, discussed the tentative plans during a quarterly earnings call Thursday and referenced the Thunderdome concept at, it has used in the most recent months. And this is from WrestlingInc.com. They tweeted that Salen was asked about WWE's touring plans in the second half of the year. And she said that their hope is full touring in the second half and not retaining a semi-permanent residence in the Thunderdome. So, as you know, you know, since the pandemic hit last year, WWE was finding all kinds of creative ways to still have events and still find ways to include, you know, us fans in these events. So, at first, they had um wrestlemania and all their events in the performance center in orlando florida which is where um they train their um nxc signees and stuff like that then of course they moved to um the thunderdome um into various arenas in florida and stuff like that so and now they're in the university of south i believe the university of south florida's um arena so and then at first they were also in the tropicana field and stuff like that so now they're doing all these things to sort of include fans in it like during like during live shows it's like you can watch it on the screen and be a part of the audience that shows up on the led boards on the television and stuff like that so they've been finding ways to get people involved and stuff but you can only you know it's only safe to assume you know that since wrestlemania has happened and since they've announced wrestlemania next year to take place in um texas that they're gonna actually start implementing a little bit more um hopefully safer live events for fans now i'm not sure if i'll go (laughs) just yet it depends on you know what's going on with the pandemic after that point but you know if they do decide to come to birmingham again you know i will probably lose my mind for maybe the first 30 seconds of that announcement but then you know put on my common sense cap and just be like okay well stephanie you know you can make the decision to go or you can make the decision not to go but i still think it's cool that they're still trying to figure out how to you know get stuff a little bit back to normal but you know i just say you know if you ever go to these live events just know to be careful and to just be safe because we're still in the middle middle of a panorama so let's just chill (laughs) um and just remember to just do what's best for you so um also in the news we have this 
back and forth beef between Charlotte Flair and Dave Meltzer. Boy, was this kind of hot. Um, so on Raw this past Monday, Charlotte Flair basically um, got suspended and, and had like a huge fine for putting her hands on a referee, right? So this sort of um, led to a whole lot of rumors talking about, you know, why is she leaving, you know, or it, why was she written off of television with a suspension when she just got back and all of that. And Dave Meltzer, you know, took it upon himself to say um, in a recording that she was getting a complete makeover because she was subconscious about her looks right and a lot of people were kind of had a lot of people took issue with it you know because he was sort of assuming that she was just going off to get cosmetic surgery which is something that she may have had in the past I can't you know confirm or deny that so Charlotte saw this and took major offense of offense to it and she tweeted out the following she said yeah I just listened I thought Dave Meltzer would have learned his lesson last time commenting about women's bodies but apparently I'm fair game so I get to respond again to a rumor about my body again you know what this is when I stop Dave go to hell and then she proceeded to tweet out you have my phone number. It would take you 30 seconds to ask as opposed to giving straight crap to your listeners. Grow up. For you of all people to comment on a woman's looks, do you have any shame, decency, or professionalism left at all? Find a mirror. Look hard, Dave. And I thought that was really, uh, that was a really classy and also a savage way to get Dave Meltzer, Meltzer together. And... I find it funny that, you know, for a very long period of time, it felt like Dave Meltzer had this reputation of, you know, ha having, you know, the best inside information in terms of what's going on in wrestling. But it's looking like slowly but surely, well, not even slowly, um, surely, you know, at this point, he is just becoming this person who really doesn't have it all together in terms of wrestling and doesn't know exactly how to report on wrestling, you know, from a 21st century perspective and it also seems that he might be a little bit biased in terms of how he did his wrestling observer awards last year and gave a lot of favorable awards to AEW as opposed to you know making it a little bit fair of what you actually saw in terms of wrestling you know all across the board instead of just giving everything to AEW that's positive and everything that's negative to WWE so um it seems like him and Another person, um, say by the name of Jim Cornette, um, might seriously just need to sort of take a good look at themselves and just not talk so much stuff about these people that they could, you know, just ask about or that if they don't like anything that's going on, maybe they should just, you know, take it upon themselves to realize that maybe wrestling has outgrown them and they should just chill and just not say ratchet things anymore. But, you know, that's just my take on it. Um... And also stop commenting on women's bodies. If you are a man, you have no right to talk about a woman's body and everything that's happening with it or changes that you feel like should be happening or whatever. I mean, a woman's body is her choice. My body is my choice. So y'all need to shut up. Either way, um, also in the news, we have the amazing news that Ronda Rousey and her husband, Travis Brown, are expecting their first child. So they announced on Wednesday um, in a video that was posted to her, U her YouTube page, um, she showed off her baby bump and said she's about four months pregnant. Now this was, now her um, leaving WWE um, when she did after she lost um, the winner takes all um, match at WrestleMania 35 a couple years ago against Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair in the first women's main event. You know, she was taking some time off to actually focus on trying to get pregnant because she really didn't want to have a baby. So now it look it's looking like this is actually happening. Now, Travis Brown, of course, you know, has um, his children from a previous relationship, but she's never had a child. So this is her first baby. So I want to give a congratulations to them. And I hope that they give birth to an amazing child um, that's really athletic and stuff like that. So that would be really amazing because he is actually a former MMA fighter as well. So between her wrestling and her MMA and his MMA, that is going to be an amazing child, you know, full of athletic abilities. So congratulations to those two. Um, also in the news, we have, um, lastly in the news, 
We have Daniel Bryan feeling kind of existential before his W before his WrestleMania 37 match with Edge and Roman Reigns. So Daniel Bryan spoke on Wednesday for the first time since, you know, fighting in that WrestleMania match for the Universal title. And he had a unique feeling. So he said that he felt detached from the situation ahead of the match. And he tried to make sense of the situation. He said it was really bizarre and that it had taken him time to fully process what the experience was like because it wasn't like a normal thing. He said he felt very out of body in it. When I'm wrestling, I feel everything and I feel like I'm enjoying it. This was weird. I was out there and it felt like I was detached. It was so strange that before the match started, I got this strange feeling. Oh no, is this what it's like before you die? Am I going to die? Huh? Well, okay. And then he said, I don't know why or how it happened, but it was unlike anything I felt while wrestling. And then he also revealed um, that he had begun that he has started talking to people close to him about, you know, what happened and openly wondered what it means for his future in wrestling. Um, he's quoted as having said, I haven't watched it back. I don't know if watching it back would help figure out why I'm so detached. Maybe it was a sign that it's time to let go of being a full time wrestler. The odd detachment, I was like, whoa, like I said, I'm I'm either going to die or maybe it's a sign that this isn't it and it isn't the same type of fulfillment that it was before. I've been trying to med- meditate on it and talk to my friends that I'm close with like, what is that? My contract is up relatively soon. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm doing with my life. So what it seems like here is that maybe he's feeling um, that maybe his season of being a full-time wrestler is wrapping up. And it's so funny that this is that this happened and he talked about this right before this episode of SmackDown came on tonight. And he was, um, and he's been challenged by Roman Reigns for a universal title match next week on SmackDown. But, um, if Daniel Bryan loses, he has to leave SmackDown, you know, forever. And he never wants to see him again. So, if this is a farewell situation that we're going through, this is going to be kind of emotional um, because it just felt like only a few years ago, you know, he just made his comeback, you know, after being told that he could never wrestle again due to his injuries. And it's like now, you know, he's sort of gone on this run. You know, he had a run with the WWE Championship, you know, after being, you know, general manager, you know, he lost to Kofi Kingston and gave Kofi his moment at WrestleMania 35. And he's just been sort of, you know, in and out with it or whatever. And maybe he's feeling like maybe he should just work backstage and help beef up, you know, other wrestlers creatively. But then there are other rumors all over social media this week that maybe he could think about going, you know, to another company since his contract is up. But I can't imagine. I... I can imagine him going somewhere else, but then I can't imagine it at the same time because he's been with WWE so long. But at the same time, if he does choose to go elsewhere, then that would be fine. But I would just prefer him to go backstage in WWE because it seems like he's found a new purpose in um, giving other people the spotlight who he feels like wouldn't have gotten the spotlight otherwise if it wasn't for him or somebody like, say, a Paul Heyman, you know, giving them you know their props or their credit or something like that so because even like tonight on Smackdown he was advocating for Cesaro to have his championship match you know with Roman Reigns so it seems like he's found more of a purpose in being an advocator for others than it is than being an advocator for himself so maybe he finds better purpose in that I don't know but here's hoping that Daniel Bryan finds a greater purpose in wrestling outside of him just being a wrestler and also here's hoping that he doesn't die anytime soon because that would be very heartbreaking and I would cry and it would just be terrible so that's all for news and gossip ish <laughs> and now we're gonna go to my special interview with Casey Dillon Right, so 
this is the hardy wrestling podcast and on today i have a special guest um she is a referee and a wrestler and also the owner of the belladonna division um here in alabama which is my home state give it up for casey dylan casey how are you doing great how are you i'm doing fantastic i'm so glad to have you here so i'm (laughs) good So I'm going to ask you my first question that I ask all of my guests, and I'm going to ask you, when did you fall in love with wrestling? Um, it had to be, I'm going to age myself here, but it had to be in like 1992. I was four or five years old, um, back in the WCW heyday, uh, being from Alabama as well. Um, I, don't, I don't even know if you were alive then, but um, <laughs> the WCW that we got was, well, the wrestling, that's the best thing you got on the TV, guys. And, uh, you know, on the CBS at the station. And I think Sting is what made me fall in love with wrestling. Okay. Like, that's a really good choice. Like, he's a GOAT, definitely. And when it comes to WCW, I was alive, but I was really little. So, <laughs> like, I was born in 93. So, right, I was sort of born, like, right a little bit before the heyday, but then all of the madness of the Monday Night War and all that other stuff that was going on, I was right there in the middle of it, but had no clue what was happening because I was a child. <laughs> but my dad was watching it and he was flipping back and forth and taping it. So that was always, you know, my experience with it. And Sting was one of his favorites and my grandmother's favorites as well. So that's a good um, choice to start with. So I want to ask, um, what was it that sort of happened in your life to make you want to pursue it as a career? So I actually wanted to, I actually wanted to do this when I was a lot younger. Um, I've been an athlete my whole life, um, but you know, but honestly at the time it was school anywhere near Gadsden. Um, I don't even know if there was even a wrestling school in Alabama at the time, at least not local. Um, you know, I'd heard about schools throughout the country and stuff like that. And when I graduated, that was one of the things I wanted to do. But you know, college right um go do the adult thing go to college yeah uh, and then you know afterwards it was straight to the military and then uh so i was a little delayed when i got started so a little later in my life um but it actually was i was at mcw so maryland championship wrestling i had and well sort of um when i was in the military i was stationed in tennessee and uh i used to watch ovw a lot and uh, they were on our local TV station and stuff like that. So um, on the weekends, sometimes, or rather on the week, I would travel up to uh, up to Kentucky and watch the OBW show. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, they were always putting over their school. But uh, being in the Army, you weren't allowed to do that. Um, so I never really had the opportunity to do it. So when I moved up to Virginia, where I live now, um, there were some schools up here, a school in Richmond called uh, Ground Zero Wrestling. And um, they helped me get involved, and um, it just it, it went from there. Um, I actually had no interest in being a wrestler, to tell you the truth. Um, I went to school to be a referee. Oh, wow. Yeah. And um, they pushed me towards wrestling, and here we are. Okay, you mentioned that um, you wanted to sort of be a referee first before being a wrestler, so... What was it about refereeing that sort of drew you to it rather than, you know, being a wrestler? Because a lot of people watch wrestling and they're like, oh, I want to do the wrestling thing. But very few stories have I heard of anyone actually wanting to actually be a referee first. So what kind of sparked that? Two things. Um, One, I've had so many knee surgeries prior to starting wrestling Mm -hmm. um, that my my main goal in life is safety. So I was more concerned with, excuse me, I was more concerned with my knee um, rather than, you know, being an entertainer and stuff like that. But I felt like I could do what I wanted to do by being, still being a referee. Um, when it came to the other, se- the second thing really was, one of my trainers was Earl Hebner. Uh, D- David Earl Hebner up in Richmond. And um, if, you, if you didn't want to be a referee after meeting them, did you really need them? <laughs> you know, um, so that was the two things that really pushed me toward uh, wanting to be a referee. Okay, 
cool. That's an amazing story. Plus, plus I need to prove to people in Alabama or people outside of Alabama that we can count past three. Oh, definitely. Yeah. See, I'm so glad you actually said that because I remember it just makes me, you know, realize how important it is that this is that this event is even happening simply because of the fact that the uh, I feel like a lot of people really don't take into account that Alabama has, you know, some of the best talent um, in terms of wrestling that we are still int- very much interested in and there's still a market for it here. So I'm actually glad that you said that. Um, so as a wrestler and as a referee, you know, how exactly has the independent scene treated you, whether it be in Alabama or in any other state? Uh, I actually had a very good wrestling career. Uh, short. It was short. Um, but it was good. Um, I I traveled the world wrestling. You know, I, I wrestled in England, in Wales, in France, wrestled in Canada. Um, you know, all over, just about every state, I think 38 of 50 states, maybe I hit 39. Um, so, I mean, my career was fantastic. I loved it. Um, I had great times everywhere. You know, I've had a few bad experiences, don't get me wrong. Um, <laughs> the Indies are run. Sometimes promotions are run by stupid people. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had a great time. And uh, to tell you the truth, Alabama was one of my favorite places to work. Um, it just has, this is not a wrestling I grew up with, you know, good Southern rack. And um, it was the style I imitated, it's the style that I moved towards when I was trying to find my character, my gimmick. And um, so I, I fit better in the South. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't get me wrong, I did New York and I did Pennsylvania and I still do all those, those places. And, uh, you know, I've got my fans there, but um, I'm more of a satisfaction up there, uh, up here on the East Coast, really, because um, my styles are so different, you know, I'm more of a Southern style. So when you bring a Southern style to a, to a Northern state, um, it, you stand out. And sometimes it's not, it's not necessarily a good thing. Uh, it's not a bad thing, but I'm a good thing. Um, so I loved my career. I had a great career. Uh, no regrets. Um, met some fantastic people. Um, and... I learned so much about about wrestling that I would never would have learned just, you know, staying at my local federation in Virginia or just wrestling in Alabama. So, um, happy. I'm not complaining about my career. Wow. So you mentioned sort of like a difference between Southern wrestling or wrestling, <laughs> as you said, and Northern wrestling. So what would you say are some just distinct some differences between the two because I've actually I've only ever been exposed to mainstream wrestling in front of television um and as opposed to really knowing the difference between northern and southern wrestling in the indies so if you don't mind like actually expounding upon that a little bit yeah and and this one I'll I'll put this disclaimer out there this is a hundred percent opinion um but what you see up north is more of imitation of and honestly throughout most of the country more of imitation of what you see on tv with WWE, it's um, a lot of fast spots, a lot of big spots, um, a lot of flippy stuff, um, stuff that's not necessary in a wrestling match, but makes everybody go, Woo! you know, um, so, and gets the chance still and stuff like that. Um, what I consider more Southern wrestling is uh, it's, it's a slower, laid back, more of a fight, um, mm-hmm. telling more of a story. You're putting more psychology into it, and uh, you're doing things for a reason. Like, you don't have to go out there and take 30 bumps to put over a good story. Um, and that is something that you don't see up north so much. Everybody gets, or he, even here on the East Coast, wherever, uh, or even out in Vegas or wherever, everywhere I'm wrestling, um, you get, you're told to go out there and, you know, give me eight to 10 minutes, and it's eight to 10 minutes of bumping from. 30 seconds into the match, I'm taking my first spot. And um, I, I don't understand it. I mean, I've done it. You know, I'll do it for the right paycheck. And I've done it for the paycheck. But it shortens your career. And um, when you when you come down to the South and you get a good Southern rest, wrestling match, you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of gimmicky stuff. A lot of character work. A lot of hooting and hollering and playing with the crowd. And, you know, the stuff that makes the Indies more fun than necessarily um, the TV does, you know, uh, stuff you can't experience 
just watching TV or even sitting at you know a big a big motion um, thing. Um, so you know, I punch you, you sell that punch. You know, I body slam you. Better you better sell that body slam. It's not necessarily a setup for another position. It may just be a move, and uh, you just don't see that up with with a lot of northern motions. Not knocking it. It's not my style. Well, I'm actually glad that you were able to break that down. Um, so as a performer, a lot of people were definitely affected by the pandemic. So how exactly were you able to sort of pivot that and adapt to that situation as we all have had to do in the midst of it? It was quite frustrating, to say the least. Um, we in the business, we're attention whores. If you, uh, if you don't mind me using that word, oh, that's um, fine. <laughs> we we want the we want the spotlight to be on us at all times, right? Um, you may be a little shy, you know, quiet in your, your real life, but when it comes to performances, you don't want to perform in front of no one, right? I mean, um, we do it. We do it with with close with close tapings up in Maryland and Pennsylvania, and places like that. Uh, recently, as much as yesterday, I was doing close tapings yesterday. Um, but it's frustrating. Um, one of the things you you do as, as a wrestler is you you perform based on the reaction you're getting, and you react based on the performance that you're getting. Right? Wow, I apologize. Um, so, anyways, um, it's okay. And um, so without a crowd, it, it's it's hard. Um, it feels like training, right? And when it, when sometimes it, there's no motivation. Um, so the pandemic really put a whole spotlight on how depressing things can be when what you love is taken away from you. Mm -hmm. um, you know. For, for the fans that are strictly WWE, AEW type fans, um, you guys were lucky. You know, you got to get to keep wrestling for the most part. Um, but those of us who are more driven to the performance side and not so much necessarily the, the TV side of things and watching it ourselves, um, it was quite depressing. And um, it took a mental, it took a mental shovel per se for a lot of people's heads. Um, I know a lot of people that said they didn't want to come back after the pandemic. Um, you know, they this business can burn you out, and sometimes you need a break. But too long of a break, it's like being stuck in the house, like everybody else is stuck in the house, right? It just burns you out. And, um, and I don't know if I'm, I'm rambling here. I don't know if I'm making sense, but kind of get the gist of what I'm trying to say is. Um, it was hard mentally on everyone. Um, and then there's the lack of a paycheck as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is a business. We do make money. A lot of money. Uh, so um, when, you, when you lose that income, you lose what you love, you're stuck at home, you know, it was, it was depressing for everyone, I think. Okay. Um, so how exactly were you able to, you know, adapt in the midst of that and sort of, you know, push forward? in a positive way um there was a lot of things promo battles uh a lot of people were doing promo battles i'm not sure if you follow how many like independent wrestlers you follow on tv or on instagram or whatever facebook but um, a lot of us were doing promo battles uh which was actually quite fun you know you're cutting promos you get matched up against someone you go back and forth it's like rap battles yeah right? that geekier right nerdier um way more fun Mm -hmm. um, so that was that was easy. Um, a lot of training. Um, over over 2018, 2019, I had three weekends off out of how many weeks are there in year? 52? 104 weeks. I had three weeks off or in total uh, from wrestling. Two of those was because I lost a grandson. Um, when it was tiring. I was I was tired. My body hurt. You know, I'm working three to four shows a week. Um, so 
in that situation, so you to, you know, maybe miss a training night one time a week, or maybe even you can't go training at all that week because you guys, you know, your normal shoot job and stuff like that. So actually during the pandemic, it's a really good time to uh, step back, you know, take a step back from working, step back into the training ring, and um, I stepped in, back into the training ring with up at MCW Maryland Championship Wrestling, and um, you know they they are one of the future of honor with Ring of Honor, one of their schools, um, one not one of their developmental schools. So you know top notch top notch trainers up there. And um, it gave me a lot of time, and to me, that was positive. You know, they would take a step back and really reevaluate what you know, what you realize what you don't know. And uh, so, to me, that's a good positive thing. Yeah, I find that um, some of the things that people have been doing in order to keep themselves, you know, afloat has been sort of has been like to get creative. Um, and sort of figuring out, you know, how can I still do, you know, even in the midst of this crazy thing that's sort of taking everything away. And it's good that you were able to do that and also keep your tools sharpened in that aspect with your abilities. And I'm sorry for your loss um, of your grandparent. I know that's not easy because I've personally been through it myself. Um, So I know that's just not an easy thing to do, but you still rose above it and found a way. So I'm going to switch gears and ask you, you know, what inspired you to create your own wrestling promotion? Um, so, how to put this nicely, um, there were a lot of creeps in this business, and there are a lot of female promotions out there, and there's promotions out there that are quite difficult to work for sometimes. Um, you know, there's a lot of drama that goes into this business, uh, a lot of pay issues, a lot of booking issues, a lot of, you know, a lot of favors, um, and stuff like that, and it becomes a headache, right? And, you know, and then there's the fact that women's wrestling is, is it's not respected, right? it, it, it doesn't get respect that the men do, right? So if you, you know, you're traveling around the country, you're busting your ass um, to get to a show that has, you know, six matches, seven matches, one women's match, right? And, you know, you, it, you know, and people actually get up and go get sodas. Like, they don't, they don't respect it. They don't watch it. It's just a throwaway match. Um, and then, and that's, that's not even counting the South. When you come to the South, it's, it's, it's been historically even worse mm-hmm. right um you, you have to be a damn good character to really grasp the attention of those folks or you just have to be a barbie doll and, and honey i'm not a barbie doll so you know i went for the character thing right um but there was no reputable really solid women's division in alabama um you know, when I first started working in Alabama, there was, there was quite a few of us. You know, there was me, there was Aja, there was Aja Pereira, there was Wode, uh, there was um, obviously Veronica Fairchild, um, there was uh, who else was available at the time? Um, you know, I was bringing girls down from the, the East Coast to come down and work with me. Uh, there was so many, and then there's the Florida girls, it was just me and um, there, at the time, there was actually good women's wrestling in Alabama, but you don't get one match. Um, and so it was difficult to always maintain that and to push that narrative forward that it actually is an incredible thing to watch. Um, so Veronica and I both decided to step back from in-ring work um, to pursue this. Um, she has a little bit of experience in promoting. I have zero experience in promoting, um, but I know not what to do, right? I know, I know that I am going to have the, the money's already there. I know how to treat the talent, all because of things that I witnessed that I don't want to do that to other people. Mm-hmm. So, using my bad experiences moving forward, her bad experiences moving forward. That is why we wanted to create a safe space to showcase women's talent that proves to the people 
then we can entertain you with the Rose Boys fans. You know, we can get in there, we can kick ass just as much as the boys can. And you know what? We can take field care shots too. Right. So that is that is our reasoning for starting that mission. Wow, that's a pretty powerful reason, to be honest, because I know from watching wrestling, you know, myself as a fan, even if it was just on television, um, there was like a huge space and time in which women's wrestling was not taken seriously at all. And it used to disappoint me because in the back of my young mind, I would say, I hope I hope one day the girls can do what the guys can do. And it didn't get that way until I got to college. <laughs> it didn't get that way until I was finally in my, what, 20s? And once it finally did get to that point, I mean, and that's not knocking, you know, what the girls were able to do while they were there, you know, because there were some moments and some pockets in there where a lot of women did pretty good things, even though they weren't being taken as seriously. But at the same time, you know, I wanted there to be a narrative change, you know, in how the women were being perceived. And now it's only just now within the past, you know, eight years where some where the dime is changing and we have more women doing amazing things. You're seeing more matches even on television, but there's still so much work to be done even an independent and I'm really glad that you're speaking to this and I'm happy that you're on here so I can tell you how excited I am about Genesis <laughs> I'm so excited about Genesis I can't even tell you how pumped I was to hear about the Belladonna division and and why Genesis is a thing and everything about it like I'm super pumped so do you want to talk more about this sh um the show itself and how that came to be yeah absolutely so um so we were we were the women's division for BCW. Mm -hmm. uh, we 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 separated. Um, we wanted to do our own thing. It's not it was not any type of issues. There was no anger. Uh, Ronnie and I just wanted to step aside and do our own thing. Um, so <laughs> wow, it's a culmination of everything that we've always wanted, right? Um, she knows the business. I know the people. Um, she's been out of the game for a few years. Her last five or so years was generated more towards like the Alabama and Georgia, Tennessee. She didn't travel as much anymore over her last um, over her last few years in the business. But I was out there. I was traveling the country, traveling the world. Um, so she kind of left the booking and figuring out the matches, the card writing, the creativity. She kind of left that portion to me to figure out. Um, so when she when we decided that she was gonna have what she was gonna do and what I was gonna do, um, I got super excited. Like Christmas morning again, you know, um, I got the chance to write the matches that I want to write, to set up things the way I want to set them up. Um, I know almost every one of these girls personally. Um, those that I don't know personally that I've never actually stepped in the ring with um, have been recommended to me or I've watched shows with them I just didn't know them um so I know the matches I'm giving you are going to be top notch I know that the matches that we've got lined up are going to be killer matches um uh, we put a lot of thought and effort into each opponent um and so we're beyond excited um nervous nervous too extremely yeah. nervous um you know it's I don't want to say this is a sink or swim show, but it's uh, it, it's a sink or swim show. Like we, we, you know, we really want the people to come out and really enjoy this show. Um, you know, we can lick our wounds and recover if it doesn't do well, but jazz. Yes, Lord. <laughs> like jazz. I am. I pulled. I called a favor, right? I worked jazz as a show with jazz previously. Um, and we've been we've been talking for years back and forth or well, since a year at least a year or so back and forth um about getting this done and then COVID hit and it just put like a, a kick stopper and everything um can i catch you up right so i wanted to i really wanted to start this thing off strong you know i've been on women's shows with fantastic cards i'm talking about i've been on shows where Right now, probably 
12 of the 15 girls on the show are signed with either AEW, Impact, ROH, WWE, uh, over in Japan. Um, and then there's three of us that are little stragglers left behind, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, it, it just tons and tons of great talent, and the show's getting drawn. Mm-hmm. We're talking 30, 40 people. Um, and it's, it comes back to the lack of respect. So um, the thought process was maybe if I can provide you talent that can that can that can go with jazz, that can put up a fight with jazz, and you know jazz, maybe that will really show you that the talent that we have is serious and is there for a reason, you know. And um, so excited, nervous, scared out, scared to be quite honest. Um, I've got my ibuprofen already ready because I know there's going to be something crazy going on somewhere. Uh, <laughs> I've got contingencies, plans B, C, D, and Z, right? So uh, I'm excited. I hope you're excited. Uh, we're excited to have you on. So you want to tell everybody about your special part of the show? Oh, man. Like, I'm I'm happy that you are excited that I'm a part of the show. Like, because this is... So for those who may or may not have seen my post or whatever, like, this is my first time ever commentating anything because I know I'm a podcast host of course but I'm you know being the commentator or whatever and I am so excited to do it because it's just the fact that I love women's wrestling so very much and I feel like you know and I feel like watching the women you know soar and rise you know in various forms of wrestling whether it be in the independence or even in the mainstream it just makes my heart swell and just make it's just one of the greatest joys of my life and i just feel really honored you know that you would even want me to even be a commentator on this thing like i just like when you told me that you wanted me i was just like are you serious oh my god like i just i just couldn't breathe i was like it was one of the greatest you know points of my life because I just write stuff down a lot and so and one of the things I do write down a lot is like maybe you know if this is going to be a career that maybe I could start using my voice here as a commentator or here as a host or here's a thing you know and I never thought that it would come into fruition this this quickly but now it is and I'm just so happy to rise to the occasion of what this means you know for my home state you know for Gaston for women's wrestling and for all of you guys and I'm just really excited and really honored and humbled that you even considered me for it like it's it's crazy I'm, I'm so happy uh, we're happy to have you um you know that's one thing about that's one thing that you'll learn about uh, any wrestling more so it's about women's wrestling is we're here for opportunity right um we're all trying to make it right we're all trying to get somewhere and some people aren't at this point people have accepted their accepted their position right but uh others are still trying to make it right and so showcasing with female talent and, and local talent is as you know i don't i don't have a lot of local girls on this show um it's not that the local girls aren't good it's that they were both to be quite honest mm-hmm. and uh I had, I had the girls that I wanted to use, and then, uh, you know, I used some gap fillers and stuff like that. I just looked behind the scenes a little bit. Um, so, I, I don't have a lot of little girls. So, having you as a representative of Alabama, besides besides Veronica and myself, really, there's no other Alabama representatives. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, um, you know, was, we needed somebody that wasn't backstage being an Alabama representative. Uh, you, you're good at what you do. You know, you've got a great uh, co-host in Brittany Hoffman. Um, if you've never seen her work um, with Elevate, she is fantastic. So um, I've got you in safe hands. So, um, you know, let's hear what you're able to do. I'm really excited to hear it. Uh, I'll be backstage listening to everything you say. So, uh, <laughs> better not trash talk me. If you trash talk me, I'll hear it now. Oh, definitely. I would never trash talk you. Like, uh uh-uh, that's that's terrible. (laughs) No, I would never do that. But I'm really happy for this opportunity. And now knowing that I'm a part of the Alabama connection here, it just makes me kind of emotional. But I'm going to try not to cry. Um, So um, I want to ask you, how exactly do you feel about the evolution of women's wrestling? And do you have any hopes for the future? The future is endless right um we've seen the we've seen what's been happening uh, we've seen going from having a 
the women's battle royal or royal rumble um to you know multiple women's titles to win the uh, women main eventing pay-per-view and the recent uh which made me so happy seeing um seeing sasha in their main eventing i was always a huge sasha, uh, sasha fan uh, i may have I may or may not have known Sasha prior Sasha, um, so you know it's, it's kind of happy to see her progression and um, seeing her and, um, and Bianca right. Yes. Um, the main event was fantastic, um, and it couldn't have happened at a better time. You know, uh, society's moving forward, um, and you know, while there's not always equal representation of everyone out there. Um, the representation out there is top notch, right? And so um, the platform that the women's been given over the last few years is incredible. And uh, I don't know who who personally thank for that. I mean, we all know who personally thank for that. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's incredible. And you know, uh, I grew up in you know a time in which it was TNA. You know, and uh, you watched my the first episode of the Bells on effect, and you know. My definition of TNA is uh, talent and attitude. Right. And, uh, but that's not the what we came up growing up with. And um, the diva era, I mean, it was entertaining, I guess, but it was misrepresentation. And it was such a lack of, not talent, not athleticism, but the lack of allowing them to do what they do best, you know? You had Lita, and you had China, and you had, you know, you had Jazz, and you had a few more that were doing more athletic things. But you had the Deborahs and the Trishes, and you know, blah blah blah. And uh, you know, I'm not going to sit there and crap on everyone's name uh, or what their work is. Um, but it, it wasn't always good. I mean, to be honest, it, it wasn't always good, and it wasn't their fault. And the fact that the women now are being sent out there to the ring, hey. Go do your stuff. Mm-hmm. Go do your character. Go out there and show the world what you have that's not a body part, right? That makes me so happy, you know? Um, the future's endless. Uh, it won't be long before, you know, two, two women of color main eventing main event, uh, excuse me, main eventing WrestleMania, um, won't be even a thing that's noticed, right? I mean, it's a great thing that's happening, but eventually, hopefully soon, it, it, it will just be another fantastic main event. Right. You know, that's that's what I'm seeing, looking forward, um, and that's, that makes me happy, you know? So, future's endless. Yes. Um, I'm so glad you said that because I'm actually going to be talking about Sasha and Bianca a little bit more on today on uh, my episode that I'm going to put out this weekend. Um, so I actually want to ask you, who are your top five wrestlers, male, female, or non-binary? Um, hmm. It's a good question. Um, so I'm 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 honestly gonna stick with uh with, with more more of the smaller famous folks uh, to be quite honest uh, we we said Sting right Sting is yeah. always gonna say um we'll we'll go with Ric Flair is always been a favorite um but in of course you know I was always an Austin fan as well but I think some of my favorites are actually lower level girls uh, girls now you know uh, Nyla Nyla's always been a, she's been a friend of mine for years mm-hmm. you know she's one of the first signings to AEW and I love Nyla to death we, we've we worked together quite so many times so many times up here in the West Virginia in the Virginias and Maryland and blah 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 up here up here and, there. and uh, we've, we've always had a great time together and um you know, we were supposed to go to 10 at one point together at some point. So, um, I love Nyla. And, you know, she, her work is so great. Um, another girl that has been in and out back and forth with a bigger promotion, Kylie Ray. You know, I love Kylie. Um, she's a sweet girl. Um, her work is, it speaks for itself. Um, I don't know if you're a Kylie Ray fan or not. Uh, I love Smiley Kylie. 
Uh, she's that girl that can always make you happy as soon as you walk through the door. Yeah. And it's not character. It's her. It's, it's her. Mm-hmm. Like, um, so always love that. Um, another wrestler that you may or may not have ever heard of, but has done so much for me personally, uh, in and out of the ring, and um, has been an icon in women's wrestling, is um, Lufisto. Um, not sure if you're, if you're familiar with her. She's a Canadian wrestler. She uh, lived in the States for the longest. Um, mm-hmm. It's actually my third match ever. Um, but 20 plus year worker. Um, a real pioneer in women's wrestling. The, I guess, the, the woman that never got signed. Right? But should easily have been signed and, and would have easily topped every women's division she ever been. Um, she just had some issues, and uh, so she's always been one of my favorites. Um, but if we go back to the uh, the more well-known side of the house, yeah, Sting, Austin, Undertaker, Flair. I uh, was always a Bobby Roode fan. I, I love I like Bobby Roode. I don't know why, but I like Bobby Roode. Um, <laughs> there's something about him, just, you know, gets me. Um, yeah, so I, I would I would call them my five bigger names. Okay, that's a pretty solid, you know, list of people, you know, and even ones that are who are your own personal favorites as well, you know, even from the independents, you know, that's really solid and it's valid here. So that was really good. And I'm actually going to look up more information on Mephisto because I have heard that name before, but never really looked into her. But I'm going to definitely look into her now. Um, well, I hope you have dedicated hours because there's tons and tons of stuff out there that you could watch for days. Oh, snap. (laughs) Okay. Well, I'll definitely do that, you know, when I get a chance. So um, I want to ask you maybe two more questions. Um, Do you believe that there should be more women in creative positions and media-based positions in wrestling? Yes. Um, This is still a male-dominated sport, regardless of how great the revolution is going, how great, you know, these main event matches are going still a minority uh, still very underrepresented uh, still if your name doesn't end with McMahon, uh, McMahon and start with Stephanie uh, <laughs> you're, you're not listened to very often as a female in this business um, somebody brought up a good point the other day and I can't remember who it was mentioned that there was more females on commentary on one particular company being WWE than than she's noticed in the independent circuit ever Mm. and that is ridiculous considering there's way more indie promotions than there are the one WWE Um, so yes there needs to be way more women the issue is I don't think there's there's the one and you know it comes so much pride that that books women shows Um, it's it's not easy to find the women that are interested in being in those positions. You know, it, it seems like a lot of times when women come in, it's, it's, it's wrestler or it's wrestling. You know, um, if, you know, if sometimes it's announcing, you know, in your case, you're the very, very minority in terms of uh, wanting to pursue the commentary side of things, right? That's not a very uh, a common thing. And, it's, it's difficult and there needs to be more women out there not just for ease of my life but for people to really if we're really going to get people to fall into re- women's wrestling you need to fall into all of it right right it's not just the wrestlers it's the wrestlers it's the managers it's the valets it's the, the commentary it's the announcers everyone you know um, and I wish more women's promotions could use all women everything but it's just tough to find them um, so, girls, if you're looking for a job, that's a job to go into. Yeah. And it's so funny. You said if your last name isn't McMahon or if your first name isn't Stephanie, no one cares. Maybe I'll have better luck because my name is Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> and my last name is Hardy, too. So maybe I'll have better luck. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and then people will actually listen to me because those are my names. And you can't deny that anywhere. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, but I, I swear my parents didn't do that on purpose. That was literally a coincidence. They didn't. They really didn't. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
So one final question, um, what inspirational words would you give to someone who's looking to start a career, whether it be in women's wrestling, refereeing, or um, even in media-based um, positions? Stick with it. You're going to hear no nine million times before you get yes. And then when you get that one yes, you're going to hear nine million more no's before you get another yes. Nose to the grindstone. You've got to stay with it. Um, you know, you're, you may be a great cup of tea, but not everybody likes tea. Right. You know, um, that's and, and you know, you're gonna hear, you're gonna, you're gonna get put down. You're gonna get shot down faster than the guys who get shot down. You're gonna, you're gonna be told that you can't make it. You're gonna be told that you're not worth it. You're not worth the investment. You're not worth the time. Um, you, you know, you, you have no future. You're not a Barbie. You know, you, you, whatever the case may be, um, you've got to stick with it. You've got to prove, you've got to work twice, three times as hard, right? If, 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 if training is two hours a day, you need to be in a six hours. You know, you need to be there early. You need to leave late. You need to, you know, be at the gym twice as much. You know, whatever your weaknesses are, you need to focus on that. Um, because people, people are going to pick on the women. They're going to find that spot that bothers you and they're going to milk the hell out of it, right? Um, this isn't necessarily the easiest business to be in. Um, it can actually be quite a pain. So, as say you pretty, you've got to stick with it. Those, those are my words. Just stick with it. Don't let the BS of this business ruin your mindset and ruin your drive to do what you want to do. And, that's and don't let the women run you out. <laughs> and that's pretty solid advice there um so casey i thank you so much for coming on the hardy wrestling podcast um it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you i feel you know very honored that you were on my show um and i'm really honored that we get to work together and i hope we continue to work together because this is awesome and this is just going to be fantastic i i see it in the future um so if you can um, just put yourself over and tell people where to follow you um, on social media and of course you know push push anything else that you have going on you know in your own career and just anything else you want to talk about absolutely uh, so you can find me on Facebook Instagram and Twitter a little bit uh, Facebook is uh, Casey Dillon simple as that uh, you can find me and Instagram is uh, Casey Dillon underscore POD I think it's what it is to be honest um, also, Twitter, I think it's the same. I don't tweet much except to make fun of Trump, so you you won't see me on Twitter very often. <laughs> uh, but uh, the the important thing, if you don't want to follow me, you've got to follow the Belladonna Division. We're on Facebook, we're on IG, we've got our own YouTube channel now. We're releasing weekly a new um, a new TV show that Veronica and I are doing, kind of like Talking Smack, uh, where we're gonna sit down and we're gonna talk about the Belladonna Division, we're gonna talk about women's wrestling, but not so much in a podcast format. Uh, more so about what's happening in the shows, what just happened, uh, you know, <laughs> what we're doing. Um, enjoy it. Um, also, uh, another thing that we didn't really talk about in this particular episode, other than the your podcast, but is big and big for me and, and important in my life, is uh, British Empire Wrestling. Um, it's a company that I worked for. I got my first UK debut with them. Uh, fantastic company. They've got 10 plus years of experience running women's wrestling. It's had some of the best uh, in the business come through their doors. through are alumni of them and uh, both training and running the shows. Uh, I'm now the proud owner of that. Um, so uh, I got that heritage. I got that fucking contract. Right? So, um, so let's push that too. We're going to push British Empire Wrestling. You find us on Facebook. Um, not so much Instagram, man. I ain't got an Instagram for that just yet. Find us on Facebook. Uh, also visit quickwrestle.com. There is hundreds of hours of, um, of work uh, from the ladies at BW, including my own work is there. Uh, watch me and Sadie give them tell you, Martin. You'll, you'll really enjoy that match. It was a good, uh, you know, I told the, told the British people to piss off, and it was, uh, it was a good time. So check that match out. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's it. My things I got going on. You can catch me. Uh, well, you won't catch me at all because it's a TV taping. But uh, I've got tons of shows coming up with uh, MCW. Got tons of stuff working out in Pennsylvania. I'm now the champion of Eclipse Wrestling. 
Uh, believe it or not, I did come out of retirement momentarily to uh, just because I had some, some stuff I needed to deal with with the Dean of Steel. Her and I had a past. <laughs> she, she needed to she needed to close that out, and uh, so I closed it out once and for all. And now I've got a title I've got to defend. Uh, so uh, you can check me out with them at Clips Wrestling uh, up in Pennsylvania. And uh, thank you so much, Steph. I appreciate everything. You've been great. And uh, I will see you soon. All right. Thank you so much, Casey, for coming on the Hardy Wrestling Podcast. Okay? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, so I was sitting with my friends one day and they asked me, Stephanie, how do you record your podcast? And I said, with the Anchor app on my phone. And they were like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, it's that simple. It is absolutely free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone and your computer. And it will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many more. You can also make money from the podcast with no minimum listenership. And it's got everything you need to make a podcast in one place. They even have classes and stuff that you can listen to that will give you all kinds of good tips on what you need to do in order to make the best podcast. So if you want to do this, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's anchor.fm or download the free Anchor app to get started. Okay, so since I had the amazing Casey Dillon on my show, and I want to thank her for coming on the Hardy Wrestling Podcast, I want to take this time to actually put over this event a whole lot more, and I'm going to be doing it within the coming weeks leading up to the event. So the Belladonna Division is one of the first all-female women's promotions in the South, and I'm so proud that it's taking place in my home state of Alabama. Whoop, whoop, sweet home Alabama. Roll, tie, roll. Um, I'm not a Crimson Tide fan. I just say that because it's just in my bones. Either way, um, <laughs> I'm just really excited that this is taking place in Alabama. So, um, the event Genesis is taking place on Saturday, May the 15th, um, 2021 at the Gadsden Mall in Gadsden, Alabama. And if you need the address, here it is. It's one is 1001 Rainbow Drive, um, Gadsden, Alabama, 35901. Um, the general admission for tickets is $15 and ringside seats are $20. And the doors open at 6 p.m. But before the doors open for the Genesis event itself, um, legendary wrestler and all around future Hall of Famer Jazz is going to be having a wrestling seminar that you can sign up for for only $50. And that's going to take place um, at the gas mall from 3 p.m. to 5 30 p.m. So if you want to take that opportunity to learn from one of the greatest women's wrestlers of all time, please do so. Go and get this class, you know. And plus, she's also booked, you know, to wrestle with us, you know, on that show too. So please take that opportunity to do that as she goes on her retirement tour. Um, and then after that, of course, you have the Genesis event, and it's going to feature some of the greatest, you know um talent that we have you know in women's wrestling today um some of these women have you know various backgrounds and various different um fighting styles and they have fought all over the world and competed in various promotions some of them even in wwe a couple of times and some of them um on impact and other places as well so first we have um nwa legend joyce grabble is going to be there harley fairfax valentina loca um, a UK star by the name of Eden Von England, Jocelyn Navarro, who's a Jamaican superstar, um, Ariella, Ariella Nix, Nina Monet, Gabby Ortiz, um, BB Ryan, Trixie Chalance Royal, um, Heather Monroe, Rachel Ray Lynn, Brittany Blake, and the weapon of all destruction, the WOAD, is going to be there. And also, I'm going to be making my um, official debut as a commentator, and I'm going to be commentating alongside Brittany Hufflin. She is amazing, and we're going to try to, you know, basically, well, not try, I'm going to try <laughs> um, to keep up with her as much as I possibly can, um, because this is going to be my first time, so I'm really excited, you know, to be a color commentator 
for this event. Um, women's wrestling has always been something I've been passionate about. So the idea that something like this, you know, is happening in my home state and I get to be a part of it, you know, just really moves me, you know, and it'll always, you know, touch me to no end. And hopefully, you know, this can be the start of something new in my life. Um, no high school musical though. So, <laughs> so we're going to tear it down and we're going to tear it up at Genesis, which is basically, you know, the beginning of things, you know, if you're biblically, if you know anything, you know, about, you know, biblical knowledge, Genesis is translated to the beginning. And hopefully this can be the beginning of something great that can continue to happen in the state of Alabama, you know, for women's wrestling. So I'm really excited this is happening again. This Genesis is taking place Saturday, May the 15th, 2021, with the doors opening at 6 p.m. And you can buy your tickets at um, this link that can that can be found on the Instagram page for the Belladonna Division at Belladonna Division. Division, um, and on their Facebook page, which is the Belladonna Division, and here's the link. It's um, https the Belladonna Division dot square dot site. Um, but you can find the link on their social media platforms. Please follow them on Instagram and on Facebook. And of course, I'm going to be posting about it on my social media handles as well. So with that in mind, please support women's wrestling. Um, even the wrestling that you may or may not know about, please support it. The wrestling that's going on in your hometown, please support it. And just, you know, raise your voices for women's wrestling because there is a revolution happening and, it's only going to get greater from here. So please support us and please come out and support women's wrestling here in Alabama. All right. So thank you guys for listening to this episode of the Hardy Wrestling Podcast. Like I always say, if you want to listen to the show, you can listen to the show um, everywhere you get your podcasts as Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, my YouTube channel called the Hardy Wrestling Podcast. Please like, share and subscribe to that channel. Um, You can listen to me on iHeartRadio, Spotify and various other places as well. Um, You can also follow me on um, Instagram at Hardy Wrestling Podcast and on Twitter at Hardy Wrestle Pod due to the characters. And, you know, if you want to, you know, check me out, you can also check me out at Queen Steph Hardy on Instagram and Twitter. And if you want to follow me on Facebook, you can find me under Stephanie LaShawn Hardy because that's my whole name. So um, with that in mind, I hope you're being safe and you're continuing to be your very best self and being the boss or EST of your own life or the king and queen of your own life and just making decisions that ultimately, you know, benefit you and your um journey and your bottom line so with that in mind um thank you for listening to the hardy wrestling podcast and until next time bye y'all